Good evening to all of you. Myself, Dr. S. Vimal Nava, working as assistant professor from EC department. On behalf of E. Road Single Engineering College, I'm going to give a presentation and video lecture on um, EACT Prerana and scheme for preparing SEST students for higher education. Main motto of this video is for preparing GATE exam. And the AACT Prerana scheme for preparing SEST students for a higher education and for GATE preparation. And, go, and I am going to give a lecture on antenna and wave propagation. And from that, uh, I am going to give a presentation of some basics of antenna and its parameters and radiation pattern, as well as antenna gain and antenna array. And the aim and objective of this video lecture is to give insight of basic knowledge of antenna and radiation pattern and antenna gain and antenna arrays and to give through understanding of the radiation characteristic of types of antenna arrays and broadside array and end fire array and collinear arrays and to impart knowledge about applications of antenna arrays and today we are going to see about antenna in, uh, basics what is meant by antenna the antenna is an electrical conductor or system of conductors the transmission or reception the transmitting antenna will radiate the electromagnetic energy into space and the reception antenna will collect the electromagnetic energy from space in two-way communication the same antenna can be used for transmitting and research purpose. So, the antenna is an electrical conductor. It is a medium which is used for transmitting the radio wave from source to destination or transmitter to receiver. In the wave, a radio wave can travel along with the help of electromagnetic energy so the antenna is a one of the medium for transmitting and receiving the electromagnetic energy so next we are going to see about radiation pattern what is meant by radiation pattern the graphical representation of radiation properties of an antenna the radiation pattern which is providing the, the graphical representation of the radiation properties of an antenna and depicted as two dimensional cross section which is used for giving the graphical representation of radiation properties of an antenna and next we are going to see about beam width what is meant by beam width the beam width is used for measuring the directivity of an antenna it is classified into two different types one is half power beam width and another one is beam width first tunnel so the reception pattern which is uh, defined as receiving antennas equivalent to the radiation pattern that is called as reception pattern and what are the different types of antenna the first is isotropic antenna the isotropic antenna is as nothing but idealized antenna which radiates power equally in all directions so next we are going to see about dipole antenna the dipole antenna, the half wave dipole antenna, another one is quarter wave vertical antenna. The half wave dipole antenna is otherwise called as its antenna, and the quarter wave vertical antenna is otherwise called as Marconi antenna. Next one is parabolic reflective antenna. 
these are the different types of antenna available in a antenna wave propagation and next we are going to see about antenna gain what is in wave gain the relationship between antenna gain and the effective area which is derived by g is equal to 4 pi ae divided by lambda squared this is the relationship between the antenna gain and effective area uh, is, which is equal to 4 pi f squared ae divided by c squared why because the lambda is equal to c by f the wavelength c is equal sorry lambda is equal to c by f so lambda uh, squared will be c squared divided by f squared and the denominated term goes to the numerator term so for 4 pi f squared ae divided by c squared this is the relationship between antenna gain and effective area and where g is nothing but antenna gain and ae is nothing but effective area and f is nothing but carrier frequency and c is nothing but speed of light it will be 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second and lambda is equal to carrier wavelength this is the relationship between antenna gain and effective area and next we are going to see about antenna array why we need for the antenna array what is the definition for antenna array to improve the performance of antenna without increasing the size of the antenna is to arrange the antenna in a specific configuration so space and space that their individual contribution or maximum in a desired direction why we, uh, we are uh, needing the sir why we need the antenna array in the sense of to improve the performance of the antenna and also this way particularly we get greater directivity gain uh, with the help of antenna array system we can get the greater directivity gain this new arrangement of multi element is referred to as an array of antenna the antenna involved in an array is known as element all the antennas are spaced equal distance in a linear axis so the all the antenna is called as element so the individual element of array may be of any form of it may be wire dipole or slot or etc sorry aperture or etc the antenna array can be defined as the system of similar antenna directed to get record high directivity with the help of antenna array only we will be getting a high directivity in the desired direction so the total field of the array is determined by uh, the total field of array can be calculated by the vector addition of the fields radiated by the individual element the individual element is generally called as element of antenna array all the individual antenna is called as element so the antenna array is said to be linear when it it will called as uh, antenna uh, linear array if the elements of the antenna array are equally spaced along a straight, straight line so the linear antenna array is said to be uniform linear array if all the elements are fed with current of equal magnitude with progressive uniform phase shift along the line and in array of identical elements there are at least five controls that can be used to shape the overall pattern of the antenna these are the geometrical configuration of the overall array it may be linear or circular or rectangular or spherical shape of the antenna so the relative displacement between the element it will also antenna array of identical element there are at least five controls one of the control that can be used to save the overall pattern of the antenna the excitation next one is the excitation amplitude of the individual element and next one is the excitation phase of individual element and then last one is the relative pattern of the individual element these all can be used to save the overall pattern of the antenna so what are the different classification of array in an antenna the based on the amplitude and phase condition 
of isotropic point sources there are three types of arrays are available one is array with equal amplitude and equal phase and array with equal amplitude and opposite phase and last one is array with unequal amplitude and opposite phases these are the different classification of arrays available in a antenna system next we are going to see about antenna array configuration what are the configuration behind the antenna array system broadly array antenna can be classified into four categories one is broadside array and next one is n pair array and next one is collinear array and last one is parasitic array these are all the different classification of array antenna configuration the first one is broadside array what is meant by broadside array a broadside array is nothing but the array of antennas in which all the elements are placed parallel to each other and the direction of maximum radiation is always perpendicular to the plane consisting the elements so a typical antenna sorry a typical arrangement of a broadside array is shown in the following figure so a broadside array consists number of identical antennas placed parallel to each other along a straight line the straight line is perpendicular to the axis of individual antenna it is known as axis of the antenna array what is the axis of array it is the perpendicular to the axis of individual antenna thus the each element is perpendicular to the axis of antenna array in a broadside array the each element are perpendicular to axis of antenna array so the broadside array uh, the broadside array is the bidirectional radiation pattern array so all the individual antennas are spaced equally along the axis of antenna array the spacing between any two elements are not denoted by distance t all the elements are fed with the equal current and with the equal magnitude and same phase as the maximum radiation is directed in broadside direction and perpendicular to the line of axis of array the radiation pattern for the broadside array is bidirectional the, the broadside array can be defined as the arrangement of antenna in which maximum radiation is in the direction perpendicular to the axis of array and plane containing the elements of array this is the uh, diagram for the broadside array the antennas are placed equal space with the uh, distance d and the maximum radiation in a y axis and the axis of antenna array is in a x axis so the antenna the maximum radiation of the maximum direction it will be per perpendicular to the axis of antenna array so the broadside array the radiation pattern will be bidirectional next we are going to see about the broadside array derivation so next we goes to broadside array definition an array is said to be broadside array if maximum radiation occurs in a desired perpendicular to array axis in broadside array the individual elements are equally spaced along a line and each element is fed with the current of equal magnitude and same phase the total phase difference of fields are point p from the adjacent source is given by psi is equal to k or beta d cos y plus alpha the normalized array factor for the n element the array factor is equal to sin n psi phi by 2 divided by sin psi phi by 2 that is the, the uh, array factor 
the factor will be sin n psi phi by 2 divided by sin psi phi by 2. Next, we are going to calculate the major lobe for the broadside array. In broadside array, sources should be in phase. So, in broadside array, sources should be in phase alpha is equal to 0 degree and psi is equal to 0. For maximum must be satisfied. For satisfying the maximum direction in a major lobe, we have to substitute psi is equal to 0 as well as alpha is equal to 0 degree. We can get uh, psi is equal to 0, 0 is equal to kd cos phi plus alpha is equal to 0. In this case, alpha is equal to 0. So, kd cos phi plus alpha is equal to 0. So, uh, cos phi is equal to 0 because the uh, right hand, left hand side with kd multiply with the cos phi goes to the right hand side 0 divided by kd. It will be cos phi is equal to 0. So, the value of phi will be uh, 90 degree because cos phi by 2 will be 0 and 270 will be 0. So, phi is equal to 90 degree or 270 degree. Next, we have to find out the nulls. To find the nulls of the array equation, is said to 0. So, sin n psi phi by 2 is equal to 0. In this case, uh, psi is equal to phi is equal to phi n is equal to plus or minus n phi. For broadside array, alpha is equal to 0. So, n phi by 2 into kd cos phi n plus alpha is equal to plus or minus n phi. So, phi n is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus n lambda divided by n d, where n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3. In this case, k is nothing but the propagation constant is equal to 2 pi by lambda. So, I have to substitute the value of propagation constant k in this equation, we can get phi n is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus n lambda divided by n d. In this case, where n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma etc. So, next we have to find out the maxima of minor lobe, the secondary maxima. The maximum value of the equation occurs when sin n psi phi by 2 is equal to 1. In the previous case, uh, we can have substitute. Uh, sin n psi phi by 2 is equal to 0. In this case, uh, sin n psi phi by 2 is equal to 1. So, uh, sin n psi phi by 2, so phi is equal to phi s, is equal to plus or minus 2 s plus 1 into pi by 2. In this case, n divided by 2 kd, uh, uh, you have to substitute the psi value, psi is equal to kd cos phi s plus alpha is equal to plus or minus 2 s plus 1 into pi by 2. So, we have to calculate the phi s as the secondary maxima. So, the secondary maxima of phi s is equal to cos inverse of cos inverse of this 1 divided by kd into plus or minus 2s plus 1 into pi divided by capital N minus alpha. So, phi s is equal to cos inverse of 1 divided by kd into plus or minus 2s plus 1 into pi divided by capital N. So, phi s value will be cos inverse of plus or minus 2s plus 1 into lambda divided by 2nd. In this case, s is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3. Next, we have to find out the beam width of major loop. What is my beam width? Beam width is defined as the angle between the two first nulls or first nulls and maximum of major lobe or beam width is the angle equal to twice the angle between the first null and the major lobe of maximum. So, beam width first null is equal to 2 into pi b is equal to, in this case pi b will be 90, 90 minus pi n. So, 2 into 90 minus pi 1 is a beam width first null. So, next we have to find out the phi n. Phi n 
is equal to 90 minus 5b. No. So, I have to substitute the pi and in the previous case. So, 90 minus 5b is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus n lambda divided by nd. Take the cosine in both sides. So, cos of 90 minus 5b is equal to cos of cos inverse of plus or minus n lambda divided by n d. The cos, cos, in, cos inverse will be cancelled. So, cos of 90 minus theta will be sin theta. So, cos of 90 minus uh, pi b, it will be taken as sin pi b is equal to cos, cos inverse will be cancelled. So, plus or minus n lambda divided by n d. So, sin pi b is equal to plus lambda divided by n d. So, we have to find out the personal n is equal to 1. So, sin pi b is equal to plus or minus lambda divided by n d. In this case, n d, it indicates the total length of the array is equal to L, capital L. So, b with personal is equal to 2 into pi b. So, is equal to plus or minus 2 into lambda divided by n d. In this case, uh, n d will be L, capital L. So, b with personal is equal to 2 divided by L by lambda. In this case, uh, this is the ra radian. We have to change in degree. Uh, for uh, changing the radian into degree, it will multiply with the 53 point, uh, sorry, 51.3. Will, it will be getting B with personal is equal to 114.6 degree divided by L by lambda degree. Next, we have to find out the half power beam width. Half power beam width is equal to beam width personal divided by 2. So, 1 by 2 into beam with personal is equal to 57.3 divided by L by lambda degree. This is the half power beam width. So, beam with personal will be 114.6 degree divided by L by lambda degree and half power beam width will be 57.3 degree divided by L by lambda degree. Next, we have to find out the directivity. The directivity can be expressed in terms of the total length of the array. So, D maximum is equal to 2 into capital L divided by lambda. The total L is nothing but the total length of the array. The lambda is the wavelength of the antenna. In a broadside array of identical antenna consists of isotropic radiator separated by a distance d is equal to lambda by 2, obtain the position of maxima and minimum of the radiation pattern. This is one of the problem. Uh, the length of the array will be n d is equal to 4 into lambda by 2 is equal to 2 lambda and the major low pi m is equal to 90 degree or 270 degree and the maximum of minor low we have to find out the secondary maxima the phi inverse is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus 2 s plus 1 into lambda divided by 2 n d this case s is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 so s is equal to 1 or plus or minus 41.4 degree or plus or minus 138.6 degree. Okay, next we have to find the first null. Pi n is equal to cos inverse of plus or minus n lambda divided by n d. n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3. So, substitute the n value in this uh, pre, uh, null. Pi n is equal to n value will be n is equal to 1 or plus or minus 60 degree or plus or minus 120 degree. Based on this, we have to draw the radiation pattern of broadside array. The broadside array, the radiation pattern will be like this. So, in the 41.4 degree and the opposite 138.6 degree, the opposite minus 138.6 degree, opposite of 41.4 degree will be minus 41.4. Degree. So, uh, this is the, the x axis line will be the axis of the array axis. The y axis will be maximum direction of the major lobe of broadside array. So, it is perpendicular to the array of antenna element or axis of array antenna. This is the broadside array. Next.
are going to see about the entire array what is the entire array the entire array is very much similar to the broadside array from the point of view of arrangement but the main difference is in the direction of maximum radiation for the broadside array the maximum radiation will be uh, perpendicular to the array axis in the entire array it is a well the entire array the direction of maximum radiation is along the axis of array it is lying on the axis of array so in broadside array the direction of maximum radiation is perpendicular to the axis of array while in the entire array the direction of maximum radiation is along the axis of array thus in the entire array the number of identical antennas are spaced equally along a line all the antennas are fed individually with the currents of equal magnitude but their phase vary progressively but uh, broadside array the equal magnitude as well as progressive phase in the to compare them broadside array the entire array will be the individual uh, current element fed and the equal magnitude and their phase vary progressively along the line to get the entire arrangement so the entire and uh, sir entire array uh, the radiation pattern will be uniform unidirectional the maximum radiation along the axis of array as shown in the figure so the antenna sorry entire array can be defined as an array with direction of maximum radiation coincide with the direction of axis of array to get unidirectional radiation in a broadside array the, it is the bidirectional radiation but the entire array the axis of array to get unidirectional radiation this is the entire array di diagram the in this case the direction of maximum radiation will be coincident with the axis of antenna array this is the major difference between broadside array and entire array next we have to uh, see the two point sources with the current equal in magnitude and phase this is one of the types of array consider two point sources the source 1 and 2 separated by the distance equal distance d and both the point sources are supplied with the current equal in magnitude and phase both the magnitude and phase will be equal and let point p far away from the array and the distance between point p and the point sources the source 1 and source 2 be r1 and r2 respectively these are the two point sources r1 and r2 so assume the far field observation r1 uh, is equal to r is equal to r this is the diagram for two point sources and consider the radiation from the point source 2 will reach aerial at point p then that from a point source 1 because of the path difference path difference is nothing but the d by 2 cos y plus d by 2 cos y is equal to d cos y the extra distance is traveled by the radiated wave from the point source 1 then that by the wave radiated from the point source 2 hence the path difference is given by the formula d cos y this is the path difference for the two point sources next we are going to see the yogi array the yogi vida arrays or yogi vida antennas are high gain antenna why we have introduced the yogi vida antenna for producing a high gain antenna so the antenna was first invented by the japanese professor yasuda in early early 1940 and described in english by professor h yogi hence the antenna name is so it is called as yogi vida the antenna was invented by the japanese professor s vida and english professor h yogi so it is called as yogi vida antenna was given after professor s vida and professor h yogi a basic yogi vida antenna consists the driving element and one reflector and one or more directors basically it is an array of one driven element and one or more parasitic elements The driven element is folded dipole, 
made up of metallic rod which is excited so the folded dipole which is used in the yagiura array for the driven element and the yagiura antenna use the both reflector and the director element in the same antenna the element at the back side of the driven element is the reflector it is of the larger length compared with the remaining element the element in front of the driven element is the director which is of lowest length and the director and reflector are called as the parasitic element the parasitic element is nothing but both the director and reflector that is parasitic element all the elements are placed parallel and close to each other the length of the folded dipole antenna is about lambda by 2 and is at a resonance and the length of the director is less than the lambda by 2 and length of the reflector is greater than the lambda by 2 the length of the director will be less than lambda by 2 and the length of the reflector will be greater than lambda by 2 the parasitic element receive excitation through the induced ef electromagnetic force as current flows in the driven element and the phase and amplitude of the current through the parasitic element mainly depends on the length of the element and spacing between the antenna arrays or elements to vary the reactance of the any element the dimension of the element are readjusted so the generally spacing between the driven and parasitic elements is kept nearly 0.1 lambda to 0.15 lambda so the this yagi array or yagi yagi antenna the reflector length will be maintained with a 152 divided by f megahertz in meter and the driven element length will be 143 divided by f megahertz in a meter and the director length will be maintained with 137 divided by f megahertz in meter this is the basic parameters of yagi ura antenna and the reflector length and driver element length and director length it will be fixed so uh, next we are going to see the yagi ura antenna diagram first one is the yagi ura antenna set uh, desired beam radiation and and second one is the radiation pattern the folded dipole antenna which is used for the driven element in a yagi ura antenna and the radiation pattern will be like this next coming to the working principle of yagi ura antenna how the yagi ura antenna will be working the parasitic element is used either to direct or to reflect the radiated energy forming complex directional antenna if the parasitic element is greater than the length of the lambda by 2 then it is inductive in actor hence the phase of the current in such element lacks the induced voltage if the parasitic element is less than the resonant length lambda by 2 then it is capacitive in nature so direct director acts the fields of driven driven element in the direction of it from the driven element if more than one directors are used then each director will be excited the next so to increase the gain of the yagi ura antenna the number of director is increased so to get good excitation in the elements are closely spaced the driven element radiates from front to rear or from reflector to director part of this radiation induces the current in parasitic element which radiate almost all the radiation with the proper length of the parasitic element the spacing between the element the backward radiation is cancelled and the radiated energy is added the backward radiation can be cancelled and the radiated energy is added in a front side of the antenna next coming to the radiation pattern of yagi array this is the radiation pattern of yagi array in the reflector reflect the signal coming from the front side and totally attenuates the transmission signal from the back side and the director which is used for retransmit the signal collected from the front side towards the dipole it attenuates the signal coming from 
side and back side so the director length will be 0.4 by length and dipole length will be 0.5 lambda is equal to lambda by 2 the direction of traveling of waves will be front side and the back side will be the reflector length and the reflector length will be a 0.55 lambda and the back slope which is used for minimum directivity from the back side or producing the minimum directivity in the back side and the side lobe which is used for very small directivity of the sides and the main lobe of radiation pattern which is providing the maximum in the direction of reception this is the radiation pattern of yagi next uh, coming to the applications of yagi uda antenna where we are using yagi uda antenna the yagi uda array or yagi uda antenna is most popular antenna for reception of terrestrial television signal now television for producing a television signal we are using a yagi uda antenna in the very high frequency band the frequency range will be 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz in a television signal applications we are using yagi uda array so the array for this application is constructed using aluminium pipe the driven element is usually a folded dipole which gives a four times the impedance of standard dipole the yagi uda array have been used in a high frequency and low, uh, very high frequency and ultra high frequency and microwave frequency bands in the frequency bands we are using yagi uda array a two wire balanced transmission line having a characteristic impedance of 300 ohm can be directly connected to the input terminal of yagi uda array in that application we are using yagi uda array next we have to discuss the some mcq questions which is related to gate syllabus so uh, the first question is the antenna array is defined as the system of similar antennas directed to gate required dash in the desired direction the options are high gain and option b high directivity and option c high bandwidth and option d all of the above the question is the antenna array is defined as the system of similar antenna to get required gas in the desired direction for producing a high gain high directivity and high bandwidth so all of the above is the answer the next question find the odd element out first one is option a broadside array option b entire array option c collinear array and option d yagi array the correct answer is yagi array why because uh, the first three are the antenna three configuration what are the antenna array configuration broadside array entire array and collinear array and parasitic array so the yagi array is not the configuration of antenna array so that one is the odd the option d is the right answer the next question the broadside array is defined as an array having maximum radiation the axis array the options are option a perpendicular to option b along option c parallel and option d none of the above which one is the right answer the broadside array is defined as an array having maximum radiation the axis array the option a perpendicular to the axis array for uh, entire array is defined as the array having maximum radiation coincide with the axis array the next question the collinear array is also called as option a broadside array sorry broadcast array option b broad wire array and option c omnidirectional array and so option d all of the above option a broadcast array a yeah, collinear array is otherwise known as broadcast array the next question the entire array is defined as array having maximum radiation dash the axis array option a perpendicular to option b along option c parallel option d none of the above already we have discussed option b coincide or along along with the axis array so option b is the right answer the next question an array is said to be uniform array if the array elements are fed with the equal amplitude 
and any phase shift option b equal amplitude and uniform progressive phase shift option c unequal amplitude and any phase shift option d none of the above so what is the right answer an array is said to be uniform array means if the array elements are fed with equal amplitude and uniform progressive phase shift option b is the right answer the next question in a broadside array the direction of maximum radiation indicated by dash options are option a 0 and 180 degree option b 90 and 270 degree option c 90 and 180 degree option d none of the above in broadside array the direction of maximum radiation indicates the cos y is equal phi is equal to 90 degree or 270 degree already we have discussed 90 degree and 270 degree in n fire array the direction of minimum radiation indicated by the options are 0 and 180 degree and option b 90 and 270 degree option c 90 and 180 degree option d none of the above option b 90 and 270 degree which is indicated for minimum radiation in n fire array it is the reverse operation of broadside array so in broadside array the direction of maximum radiation will be 90 and 270 degree but in n fire array the direction of minimum radiation will be 90 and 270 degree the next question the relationship between directivity and the array factor length is given by d is equal to 2 into l by lambda and b is d is equal to 3 into l by lambda option c d is equal to 4 into l by lambda and none of the above what is the relationship between directivity and array factor length is 4 into l by lambda that is the right answer the next question in phase array the maximum radiation in any direction can be obtained by controlling dash excitation in each element options are option a angle option b phase option c amplitude option d none of the above so what is the right answer answer b frequency is the right answer the frequency scanning array is an array which phase can change can be controlled by varying the frequency the next question the adaptive array is an array which turns the dash beam in a desired direction and dash in the undesired direction options are option a minimum and maximum option b maximum and zero and option c maximum and minimum option d none of the above what is the adaptive array maximum and the desired direction and zero in the undesired direction the adaptive array will produce only in the maximum direction it cannot be produced in the undesired direction so option b is the right answer the next question the array in which the incoming signal received and sent back in the same direction is called as n fire array option b frequency scanning array option c van atta array and option d none of the above option c van atta array is the right answer the array in which the incoming signal received and sent back in the same direction will be van atta array option c is the right answer next the binomial array is an array whose elements are excited according to the current levels determined by dash binomial coefficients or binary coefficient or integer coefficient or all of the above the binomial array is an array whose elements are excited according to the current level determined by only the binomial coefficient so option a is the right answer next question the important characteristics of binary sorry binomial array is dash option a is small beam with option b high directivity option c no side lobes and option d all of the above in a binomial array there is no side lobes that is the important characteristic
so i hope very well uh, all of you understood about the what are the parameters of antenna what are the basics of antenna what is the radiation pattern what is mean by antenna gain what is mean by antenna array why we need for antenna array in a antenna and uh, what are the different configuration or different categories of antenna array and what is mean by broadside array what is mean by n fire array and what is the yagiura antenna and working principles of yagiura antenna and uh, we have uh, discussed uh, some mcq type of questions which is related to for uh, today topic antenna array uh, it is uh, very useful for preparing the gate for scheme for preparing scs students for higher education as well as gate preparation okay thank you to all of you next class we will discuss the another topic from antenna and wave propagation thank you பாக்குறேன் ம் ம் ஆகிறேன்